Hey GED students, it's GED question of the day time and we're starting um, a new topic. We're going to have a bunch of questions of the day all on uh, one of the GED's favorite topics, point, slope, and graphing lines. So I've got a ton of them. So let's take a look at this example here. It says use the equation of the line. What are they talking about, equation of a line? Well, hopefully you guys know by now that an equation here uh, is a basically a mathematical statement where I have two expressions that are equal to each other. So there it is. There's my equation. Now you say, what do you mean it's the equation of a line? Just looks like a math equation to me. Well, it turns out that this particular equation has lots and lots of solutions. And if I were to connect all the solutions together in space, they would draw a line. Mm. So if you've never seen anything like this before, I have a whole uh, playlist on this on YouTube or a whole unit on this in your um, online class if you're in my online class so you should go check those out but we're going to use the equation of the line to complete the table of points here now what you should notice even if you don't know anything about points and you don't know anything about equations we do know some stuff about algebra we've spent a lot of time playing with algebra and here's what we know we know we can do what's called substitution anytime I know what a letter is equal to I can feel free, free to trade it out. And take a look at this in, this table of points here. In this table of points, I have two columns. I have an X column and a Y column. And look what I'm doing. I'm giving you an X value. Like in this first one, I say when X is negative 2. So what I'm asking you with this table here is I'm asking you like, um, let me get out a different color pen so you can see it. But I'm asking you here when X is negative 2, Uh, what does y equal? Well, what's y? You might say, Kate, how the heck am I supposed to know? Well, you're supposed to go make x be negative 2. You're supposed to do that substitution. That's what we've always done in algebra class. When we know what a variable, meaning a letter is equal to, we substitute it in. So notice I kept my y, y, my equals equals, my negative 2 kept negative 2, but I just turned my x into a negative 2. Why? Because my table told me x was negative 2. And I'm going to, to that, add 3. Again, I'm just substituting in the known value. And now you can see that this equation is already solved for y, meaning y is alone. So all you have to do is do the simplifying on the right-hand side. You just have to do the math on the right-hand side. So um, negative 2 times negative 2, well, a negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 2 is 4. And to that, I still need to add 3. And so from 4 plus 3 I get 7. So what did I just figure out? I just figured out that when I turned x into negative 2 my y equals 7. And so I got the first value on my table. Now a lot of students get mixed up here. Now what do I do now? There's no more x's left. You always keep going back, back, back to the original equation. So I'm going to erase all this work and now I'm going to try what happens when I make x into a different number. What's the next number they'd like me to try for x? Well they'd like me to put a negative 1 for x and see what happens to y. Well let's check it out. So I don't know what my y is going to be. I won't change equal signs and I won't change numbers, but I sure can trade a variable out for its known value. I traded out x for negative 1. Notice that I did put the negative 1 in parentheses because I know that when a number and a letter are shoved together like this with nothing between them, they're multiplying. So those are multiplying. Plus 3. Okay, negative 2 times negative 1. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 1 is just 2. And now to that, I still need to add 3, and 2 plus 3, of course, is 5. So when I plugged in a negative 1 for x, I got a 5 for y. And we're just going to keep going like that. Ooh, I meant to get an eraser. There we go. And we erase, I erase that one, and I'm going to start on the next one. If I had more paper, I wouldn't be erasing all my work, but I got limited room to work in, guys. So now I'm going to plug in a 0 for my x. Well, negative 2 times 0 plus 3. Of course, negative 2 times 0 is just 0. Anything times 0 is 0. And if I add that to 3, I do get 3. So when I plugged in a 0 for my x, I got a 3 for my y. And so you guys are intimidated by this math stuff, but you can see anytime you know a variable's value, you can just plug it in. So again, 
if I wanted to see what would happen when my x is 1, I turn my x into a 1. Negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2. Add that together with 3. Well, if you're $2 in debt and then you get $3, you're going to have $1 left over after you pay off your debt. Uh, so I get 1. Um, if you did this on the GED, you would have a calculator. So if you're struggling with the negatives that I'm doing, feel free to type them in into your TI. And for the last one, I'm going to plug in a 2 for x and see what happens. Well, <clears throat> negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 3. If I'm 4 in debt, I'm 4 back before 0. I'm at negative 4. And I move in the positive direction, 1, 2, 3. I'm still going to be below 0. I'm going to be at negative 1. And so I get 2, negative 1. And that's all it says. Use the equation of the line to complete the table of points. I filled in all the y values. This table is complete. This is done. What a weird answer, you might think. Well, this is totally legit, very GED typical to see if you just get it, if you just understand. All they're asking you to do here is put in a number for x and see what happens to y. So you don't have to know anything about lines in order to do this simple, simple algebraic concept of substitution. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer it.